we can take off the mask now because um, we decided because we're in social distancing, we would wear a mask until the start. But for you to hear us better, this is where we are. Welcome, guys. Thank you. This is probably one of the top sessions. It's about the Balearics as a top destination. But before we start, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, because this is an international show. And it's probably, I mean, I'm so excited that we're finally back and that we're finally doing things again. Um, top destination Balearics today, and I am here with four specialists. We could have picked hundreds Recording on the islands. In progress. Because the Balearics are a great destination. But like the four of you, I'm really, really pleased to have you here. But let's start with a quick introduction. Ladies first, Marta. Yes, hi, my name is Marta Iglesias. I'm a charter broker with Campron Nicholson's. I've been uh, acting as a broker of, charter broker of super yachts for well over 25 years and chartering everywhere in the world and especially in the Balearic Islands. Thank you so much, Marta. And joining us by Zoom, because we're only allowed to be four, so Isabella kindly offered to do it from Zoom. Isabel, welcome, good morning. Could you please introduce yourself? Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, it would be nice to be there with you, uh, but hopefully next year it can be more of us. Um, I'm Isabel Terwell. I'm the operations manager of Ocibar. Ocibar is the company that manages marinas. At the moment, we manage Port Adriano in Mallorca, Botafoc Ibiza in Ibiza, and uh, Port Tarraco in, Tar in Tarragona. And also, I am vice president of two uh, associations. Well, one of them is ANADE, an association, and then the Balearic Marine Cluster also. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Let's move to the gentleman, Victor, next to me. Hello, Bono. Nice to be here with you, and thank you for the invite. I'm Victor Perez. I'm commercial director for Astillers de Mallorca. My background is naval architect and marine engineer. And Astillers de Mallorca is actually, well, I guess most of the people know it, but it's a full service refit and repair shipyard with our main facilities here in Palma, and we also have facilities inside STP and in Puerto Rico, inside the marina. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Last but finally, <laughs> not least, Miguel. Okay, I am Miguel Angel uh, Giteras. I am the business development uh, in Evolution Judge Agents. We are an agent and we are offering uh, to the judge a comprehensive and best cop service, a complete service. That we are touching all the different departments on board, from the concierge department, uh, logistic department, uh, provisioning, uh, spares and contractors, uh, logistics, and also uh, TPAs, uh, customs, and legal uh, service. So we offer a complete service to all our clients. We have our, our headquarters here in, in Palma, of a big office in, in Ibiza, and we have another big office in, in Barcelona that is taking care of the um, uh, coast of Catalonia, from Tarragona, uh, Villanova, and also we have different offices around Spain, in Gibraltar, in Vigo, in... in uh, okay, I'm going to stop you there. Yes. He's <laughs> taking a moment, he's taking a moment. <laughs> Guys, everybody, we know, we're, so we're surrounded by specialists, and they've had the moment to shine, they had the moment to promote their companies, uh, but now now it's about the Balearics from now onwards. But like just to summarize, we got Refit with us, we got Charter Brokerage with us, we got a Yacht Agency with us, and we got Marina with us at the port. So we are very well connected. We're going to discuss three topics today. And I'm going to keep you short because I know if I let you speak, it's <laughs> never going to stop. <laughs> um, well, it's just how it is because right. you know so much. What we're looking for today is the hidden gems. We're looking for those unique things that people don't know. We're new, looking for some new information to share. And we're talking doing it in, in, in three sets. We're talking about the summer destination, we're going to talk about the refit as a destination, and we're going to talk about the winter destination, in that order. But before we start, just, just shortly, sh shortly. <laughs> eh? Isabel, how are bookings looking for summer? Because you're doing the marinas. How are we looking? Well, uh, we're very pleased because uh, they are looking good. Obviously, with the situation where all of us were a bit afraid because we don't know what's going to happen uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. But if, if everything continues uh, at the pace it's going and vaccinations keep going good, uh, the bookings are looking really good. And uh, we can see everybody preparing for the season. So, um, I mean, uh, we're really positive about this and we think that it could be a really good season. And uh, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that things carry on as they are going now and, uh, and uh, we can have a, a very good summer this year. 
Well, let's hope so. I mean, I think everybody's dying to have a great summer. I mean, any, any charter bookings yet? Any, a lot of inquiries? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we had very realistic uh, expectations in terms of inquiries and bookings. And I have to say, everything is going above our expectations. Wow. Um, we are having a good amount of inquiries, but most, surpri most surprisingly, what we're having is a very good conversion rate, inquiries to bookings. Um, those who, make this, who take the step to inquire and have interest in it, then they also take the step to book, which is very important. Okay, and a lot on the Balearic. Yeah, yeah, a lot on the Balearic. One of the safest destinations this summer, actually. Because we are one yes. of the safest destinations. And I had my first jab, so I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel, how is it looking as an agency? No, the same uh, as... No, no, yes, busy. We are starting busy because uh, uh, here in, in, in Ibiza and in, in Palma or in, the, in Mallorca in general, we are quite busy now. The season starts because yeah. really uh, you can see how the different people are arriving now to the Balearics. Uh, the control that we have to enter in our islands is perfect yeah. because you have a perfect control. Of course, the ways to come here is only by plane or by yacht, so yeah. it's easy to have this kind of control that perhaps in other parts of the continent is more difficult to have uh, this control. So that helps a lot in other... To, to make uh, 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 the situation of, of uh, okay, we are quiet, we are under control, uh, you are safe. This is a more important thing that we are. Thank you. And Victor, like from a refit perspective, early season, late season, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're finishing our winter season, and obviously this last winter was difficult because yeah. of COVID as anywhere else. It was not as bad as we thought a year ago. So at the end, we managed to have quite a lot of work and we were fully booked almost the whole winter. So we have seen a slowdown on activities, especially on the most, let's say, owner uh, works as painting interior and so on. But it was not that bad. And for the next winter, it looks very promising. We're having a lot of inquiries and uh, we think it's going to be a very busy season. Okay, well, come back to the Balearics. That's the message. Okay, let's get going. Summer. There's a lot of people coming. I'm looking at you, Marta, because mm -hmm. now we're going into the hidden gems. Yes. If you come this summer, whether you're on a super yacht or a slightly smaller vessel, mm -hmm. where do you go? What is the tip of summer for, of, for you? I mean, it's always going to depend on the type of client that you yeah. have. You're always going to have the type of clients that want the wild lifestyle of Ibiza. Yeah. That's still there. It's probably going to be one of the best summers ever because you will be able to get a table wherever you want because there will not be so many people. This is very important. It's not going to be so crowded. Well, hopefully there'll still be um, some nightlife out there. Last summer they managed, so I'm sure this summer too. If you are on a family charter and you're not into the Ibiza type, Come to Mallorca and especially go to Menorca. Menorca is one of the most fascinating islands in the Mediterranean at the moment. It's so guided towards the environment. It's so nature conscious that it's um, incredible to see. There, if, if you're into diving, we have four na nature marine reserves on the islands. One of them here in Mallorca in El Toro. There's nothing that you cannot do here. Um, I would say try and define your interests, and when you define your interests, you're gonna find them in each island that, uh, of, the, of the archipelago here. Yeah, so you're that convinced. Like, is there anything new? Is there anything like, oh, that reopened, or anything that's like, wow, that's like... Well, in terms of um, restaurants, clubs, or lives, yeah. it's a little bit early to tell, because okay. some of them have not reopened yet. Yeah. So, and some of them have not opened. But, however, for example, here in Mallorca, this summer, what just opened are two, um, one restaurant and one sort of more of a lifestyle experience uh, by very famous Michelin star chef Martin Berasategui. Yeah. They, they literally just opened, so that's new. Um, again, if you're into nature, the pandemic last year, what it managed to do is the regeneration of the marine wildlife here has been incredible. Mm -hmm. So if you're into nature, this is another thing that you're going to experience here that uh, you could say that is one of the new things that we have again. And um, for places like Ibiza, again, it remains to be seen what's going to be open in terms of nightlife. So it's a little bit early to tell at the moment. Okay. And do you think, and like everybody just toss in, right? Just tell me if you've got like uh, something to add. Do you think that like... Of course, I think we're going to have quite a busy summer, but I don't think it's going to be as crazy as mm -hmm. other years. So you, you, you'll be able to have the base for yourself, or at least not to be stern to stern, right? Exactly, exactly. That's the idea. 
most likely uh, in, in the high season weeks in Ibiza, it's still going to be a little bit hard to find a berth, but not as hard as before. And you're going to be able to enjoy the old glam of the Mediterranean again, yeah. which was a little bit lost in, you know, in, the, in the crazy days pre-COVID, where everything was just extremely busy. Now you, you'll feel the glam, you'll feel the, the luxury to yourself a little bit more than before, I think. Fantastic. Isabel, want to add something to that? Because obviously you, you are at the marinas, you know, right? Is there anything special happening this summer? Um, I think that it's going to be, obviously, as Marta was saying, not a normal summer, but it's going to be a lot more uh, nearer to normal than last year. And um, for example, in Porta Adriano, we'll be doing our, our events. Uh, we can do more events than we did last year at present. We're already starting with our summer market, then in, we're going to do our concerts. We managed to do them last year and we'll do them again this year. And depending on how things are, they will be able to be more or, or less public. And uh, we're carrying on in, on all our events. The only thing is that we've, we're doing most of them later okay. uh, because we haven't been able to do them in, in the, in the springtime. So there's, they're going to go on uh, right into November. We're going to be having events in the port. And I imagine that in the rest of of places where they usually do events, they're going to do more or less the same thing. Uh, so, so like the season has changed a little bit, as uh, as uh, Victor, I think it was, was also saying before. Yeah. Good. So, and and okay, you have to tell me, Isabel, who is performing this summer? Because that's always a secret. I'm let's see. Sorry, let's see if we can I'm get sorry. someone out of you. I Give me a hint. I Give can't me a hint. Say yet, but it's, it's going to be a, a, a very good uh, a very good group of. of uh, of artists coming, so um, it's, it's really, we're nearly there. We're just finishing with the contract, so we can't say yet, but um, it's going to be a good summer again, yeah. Okay, let's guess. Who's coming? <laughs> Are we at UB40? When was it, last year or the year before? Last year. Last year? Yeah. No I've got no, no clue. I have no, no idea. Clue. <laughs> the Rolling Stones. I don't know. The Rolling Stones? <laughs> <laughs> that would Queen, be cool. for sure, they're vaccine. <laughs> Well, they're at the age group that are vaccinated, so I guess it should be good. That's so, good. thank you, <laughs> thank you, Isabel. But I'm, I'm going to try, eh? I'm going to get something out of you today, like just a little yeah. secret, a little hunch. What do you see, uh, Miguel? Um, if, because you're looking at, like, you know what they're ordering at the moment. What kind of summer will it be? It's going to be a lot of be on the vessel summer. Are people ready to go out and party? What do you think? I think that it will be a mixed. Uh, okay. So really, uh, they feel safe on board. That's very important. One of the things that uh, we see that is working very well, for example, with us is the kitchen of Spain. So you can bring the chef on board, mm. and and that's great because uh, you one 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 will have contract with different uh, yeah. uh, good uh, chef, and they are going on board. You you make the kind the best uh, Michelin uh, stars uh, um, chefs. Uh, with your crew or uh, with, your, with your guests or with the owners, so that's great. But at the same time, we are always trying or we are in, always in contact with the uh, VIP entertainments that yeah. we can offer to our clients in, in the island. That is that's important. They have to be, for, for example, this year, I think that they, they will feel more special mm -hmm. than other years mm -hmm. because other places will be ready for them and with not a lot of people in, in this. Yeah, I, I think for concierge services, it's going to be a great season because, yes. like, I, I remember how difficult it is to book a table or to, or to be somewhere. And, and I think this year it's going to be, I think we are a very hospitable destination in general, but I think this year we're going to, you're going to be opened with, welcomed with open arms, right? Yeah. And I think it's, well, they know better than me, but I think it's going to be a long season as well, because we yeah. are seeing on the shipyard a lot of clients that were supposed to leave in June, yeah. and all of a sudden they are like, yeah, the owner wants to leave mid-May or starting yes. of May even, because he wants to use his boat, probably the vaccines and the improvement on the COVID conditions yeah. uh, here. I think they have helped that the owners want to use the jazz before, so probably the season is already going on for some clients. I mean, the season has started. I mean, you, you see it all around, and I agree with you. There's a lot of vessel owners that want to use the boats at the moment, that want to stay a little bit longer before they move. Um, yeah, so, so hopefully it's going to be this mix between, if I summarize it well and correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to be a mix of family-focused, on-the-vessel-focused, with, with some outside entertainment, which is not going to go crazy, but existing. Which, but also, if you want to go out, it's going to get, be easier to get things done. And 
one thing, the sea has never been cleaner as this year. It is amazing, Perfect. right? Yeah. It is amazing. Okay, favorite spots on either of the Balearics. Isabel, your favorite spot. Where would you go if you were going on a holiday here? Well, Don't say Port Adriano. <laughs> there are many, many special places. And, and I think uh, Mallorca, as all the other islands, I say Mallorca because it's the island I, I visit the most because I, I, I live there, although I, I'm actually in Ibiza at the moment. Um, and, there, and as you were saying, there's loads of people here. There's, there's, uh, last time I was here, it was Easter, and uh, there's a very big difference with the amount of people here. And uh, in Mallorca, one of the places I like best is San Telmo, myself. I love San Telmo. I think it's like, it's conser conserved its quaintness of a, a fisherman's village and uh, it's uh, unspoiled. It's right in front of la, the, the natural park of, of Dragonera. And uh, if I had to choose a place, I would choose San Telmo myself. Although there's, as I say, so many places and so many contrasts that I think a yacht is ideal because it, it, you can go all around the island uh, and uh, you don't worry about parking or looking for hotels or whatever. You just have your yacht or your boat if it's not quite as big as a big yacht. And, uh, and I think it, it's a really good experience. San Delmo. Miguel, your favourite spot on either of the islands? Well, uh, it's so many <laughs> that I don't know. Well, one thing that I, I like a lot during, uh, during the summer is that the, the people that are coming to the Balearic Islands discover the center of the island. Mm. This is great because you have our gastronomy, uh, our culture, uh, our, um, there are so much events in small villages. You can see that with also with the captains that normally are living here in the island. Finally, they are buying homes not in, in, the, in Palma, that is a beautiful city and one of the best cities to live in the world. Yeah, they are going to Alaró or they are going to Binisalem or they are going to the center of, 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 of the island in this particular case of, of Mallorca. Uh, that is uh, my, my uh, recommendation to all of them, to uh, not only the beaches, because everybody knows that uh, uh, me as a major king, when we are traveling to, to another places in the world, yeah. always we are comparing our beaches with the Caribbean or with the Greek <laughs> island. And I think that the water that we have here in Formentera, Ibiza, Menorca, and Mallorca are great. Uh, so I think that they have to discover our island inside. That's a great tip. Marta, you want to add something to that? Your favorites? Yes, I would also stay in Mallorca. And for me, without a doubt, it would be anywhere in the Tramontana range, but especially in Port de Sawyer. Port de Sawyer. Sawyer and Port de Sawyer. This is, and especially this year, it's a little bit like traveling back in time because, yeah. you know, you're there on the seashore on this beautiful, beautiful natural bay, and then you have this amazing wooden tram going through. I mean, you just put a scarf around, uh, old sunglasses, and you feel like a movie star there. Well, there's a lot of movie stars living there, actually. Yes. True, <laughs> true, <laughs> there. true. So true. That's, that's, that's one of the hidden secrets, by the way. <laughs> yeah? I know where Catherine Zeta Jones lives. <laughs> yep, not, not too far from there. Not too not far, too far from yep. there, exactly. Yep. George Sand. <laughs> and Victor. Yeah, I agree with Miguel that the interior of the island is probably the less known and it's amazing. And the amount of activities you can do, horse riding, golf, cycling, motorcycling. And if I would have to choose a place to go with a boat, probably would be Cala Figuera, the one in the north at the end okay. of Tramontana. Yeah. It's really a wild beach with you cannot see any building. It's not massive, so if you go on a big yacht, probably you will have to anchor a yeah. bit far. But I think it's really into the nature. It's, there's not a lot of people. You cannot drive to there, so you don't see also a lot of people in the beach. And the color of the water and the amount of uh, wildlife there, it's, it's really nice. So I would, I would choose there. Okay. Those are great. I'll give you my tip. My tip is any of the golf courses on any of the <laughs> islands. <laughs> We've got so many. I'm, I'm a fanatic golf player. We've got so many great golf courses. So my perfect day is breakfast in the marina or on the boats, play golf, lunch somewhere in the inlands, and then dinner in one of the amazing restaurants that we have on all of the islands. I think that's my, my perfect day. And I'll do quite a few of those this summer. And I think most of you will. And I think some destination, I think we got that covered, right? I think we got that nailed. But Mallorca is not only, no, of Mallorca, sorry, the Balearics, my apologies, I live in Mallorca. And the Balearics are not only known for a great summer destination, I think refit is huge on the islands. And I mean, Victor, you're with us. Like, we were doing a little bit of a pre-chat and uh, you're saying it's going to start early this year. 
Yeah, also because the summer season is going to start early. So obviously, well, as you know, there is an, an amount of months that the jobs get used. So we are seeing many clients leaving early for their summer season, and they want to come back in August already to prepare for the winter. As well, I think, because the next winter season in the Caribbean for charter looks promising. So they want to get the jobs ready for uh, departure in the end of November, start of December. So if they have work to do and now they need to start a season, but they want to be ready in the Caribbean, they only have the option of starting to prepare in, in August. So we see that already mid-August, it's going to be a high season for us. So if you want to book your reefer, you're saying you have to be early. You need to start booking. It's going to be full. Is that what you're saying? Not only with you yeah. guys, with STP, yeah. within, the, within the Varadero, in, 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 in Portals or in uh, Portadiano, it's going to be busy. Yeah, I mean, both on our premises and in STP, where we also work yeah. a lot, we are not that far from being fully booked because I think the clients, they are aware of the boom that is going to be the next week to prepare the yachts. So yeah, I would recommend at least to get in contact with the shipyard and to book a space and start to prepare for the space and also for the subcontractors to Maybe. get of used course. for the big jobs, which is the other thing. You might get a space, but you haven't got the resources to do the work. So even if it is not something mandatory, which I think it's one of the difficulties we're seeing now, many owners haven't used the yachts for more than a year. Yeah. So it's a bit difficult to let them compromise to doing a refit when they are like, well, I haven't seen my yacht for more than a year. Yeah. But if you cannot uh, commit for some days, at least to start the relation, to see which are the options, so when you get the owner on board, you have already some numbers and possibilities, so he can better choose. So yeah, I would recommend that for sure. Good. How is it looking in, uh, with you guys, uh, Isabel? Because like you got the Varadero there. Is it, do, you, do you know if, there's, if they're getting fuller and starting early as well? Uh, there's certainly, as Victor was saying, there's certainly been like a sort of a, a shift in, in, the, in the season. And um, I, I suppose it's, it's all due to, to how, uh, how COVID has, has changed things. But yes, it does. It has changed. They've also told us that they have noticed a difference and uh, they're getting a lot of uh, petitions already. And they're, and they're giving out estimates for people who want to do their work in, 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 this, um, in this, what should be the low season, but it's starting a bit before this year. And we know we've got a lot of subcontractors on the island. I mean, uh, a lot of like specialists, but like, are they, are they, are they all fully active? So you, do you notice, there's, like, I'm just asking the, the, the obvious, right? We had a tough year last year. I mean, everybody had a tough year. A lot of people went to, and, and we call it Erte in Spain, which is, how would you call that in English? I have no clue how you call it. It's like a temporary, um, I forgot the word. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, unemployment. And it's like yeah. a temporary yeah. unemployment. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to ask the only British person here. Alice, how, does this, how is it called? Redundance, temporary redundance, right? Temporary redundance, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so there's someone behind, this, behind the screen, it doesn't matter. We, we, we ask for every help we can get here. <laughs> We're just reading. <laughs> We're there. Um, Google, Google. So temporary redundance, and like, so are they, uh, do you know that, Victor? Do you know that, Miguel? Are, are they back on track? Is it going to be different this year? What do you think? No, it will be different for sure. There are a lot of yachts that, uh, unfortunately, during the, the COVID period, they didn't do all the work that yeah. really they have to do. Some yeah. of them compulsory. Some of them have to be um, for, uh, for flag or for, or for uh, uh, surveyor service. It's, it's compulsory for them to, 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 to have this, this work done. Yeah. And for sure, we'll, we'll have uh, in the refit se uh, season from end of August until beginning of December when the yachts are going to the Caribbean will be full. Uh, that's good for the, for the industry. Yeah. Uh, and for sure they will have another, a, a lot of people coming back to the, to the, to the industry and, and with a lot of employees on, on, on board because um, we can see that uh, since now because uh, also preparing this, the summer season, they are given uh, give us, uh, to the different refit shipyards all, all the, the war list that as Victor explained yeah. Uh, p for preparing and to and to have an slot there because they have uh, checking uh, where you, you can haul out the vessel, a berth in place where you can do this kind of work and to be ready yeah. and to have all the companies ready to to uh, to have the work finish on time. That is another important thing. Exactly. But like we normally have a refit season that like traditionally started from October until end of February, March. But you're saying it's starting early this year because yeah. a lot of vessels also want to leave for Caribbean Yeah, the season Caribbean November. is pretty yeah. much the stop on the season or the pause on the season when yeah. someone needs to leave start of December. And then after Christmas, we start, let's say, the second half of the season for the yachts getting prepared for the summer. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think as Miguel was saying about the subcontractors, yeah. 
This last winter was tough. It was not as bad as we thought it would be, but also keep in mind that the previous winter was absolutely a record for us. And okay. I think pretty much for, when I say us, for all the industry in Palma. Yeah. Yeah. So it has been a difficult winter, but after a wonderful winter. So I think most of the big companies and of the reliable companies, let's say, that we're working here, uh, we have survived the winter and we're very much looking forward to working again on the next one. Okay. And this is, I'm sorry, this is another important thing of the Balearics, is the quality of the industrial that we have here. Because during the COVID season, that is, was difficult for the people coming from Holland or coming from Germany to work here. Yeah. With our industry here in the Balearic Islands, we offer a good uh, service and a good quality for all these uh, jets that did the refit here with our own companies here, with, uh, um, with, with the service and with the official service that we have in, in the island, with any kind of works that we can do on board. I mean, listen, we've got a great, we got like, we are such an international destination. I mean, I, yes, it's true, a lot of the Dutch, German, British companies were not able to travel specialists down, but I think like a, a lot of them live here as well. I mean, who doesn't want to live here? I mean, come on. Yeah. Eh? I mean, he's from Mallorca, he left us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he came back. <laughs> he'll, he'll come back. <laughs> eh? What do you think? He's the only Mallorquin on the yeah, yeah. down here and he left. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's true what Miguel is saying. I think for some clients, uh, with the COVID, was even uh, that they discovered yeah. some of the local companies because they were used to bring companies from abroad, which yeah. is perfectly fine for us. Yeah. And because of the restrictions of traveling, they couldn't bring the contractors. And they were like, what do I do now? And yeah. we were, well, we have people in the island that they can do this. They are official services of whatever brand. And they discovered some subcontractors, and now the next winter, they want to work with the local subcontractors. So that was one of the few positive things of this uh, COVID uh, winter, that some uh, of our clients discovered the local industry, let's say. Okay. Do you see the same thing, Isabel, uh, at your destinations, where that, that local contractors were used more often and that they did the work brilliantly? Um, I think it, it depends a lot. Um, the, the trouble is, uh, with, with the Balearic Marine Cluster, we're working a lot on, on getting uh, people from here more uh, prepared uh, to, to work in the industry. I think sometimes we can't have more local contractors because uh, there aren't all the specialists we need, but I'm sure that uh, every time, more, all, the, all the contractors they are, I'm sure they're pleased, they get a lot of work. And, um, and I actually think that it would be important that there are more local contractors because it's a very good business for, for the people from here. But this is, a, as I say, another issue. But um, I don't think they, that they get more work because they, there, aren't, there aren't all that many specialized in some things. But the ones there are, I'm sure that, uh, that they're, gonna, uh, they're gonna have all the work they need this year. Yeah. yeah. And of course, like, and as you're like, we're in the Balearic Marie yeah. cluster, it's one of those websites you can go and find a lot of people that can help you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Paid, <laughs> paid advertisement. <laughs> Marta, would you like to add something to it from your experience to the refit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the refit industry in Mallorca has proven to be an amazing, but uh, it has an amazing impact on the local economy all year round. Mm -hmm. It is one of the industries that employs people all year round, where most people that are employed in it have a long term contracts, not temporary contracts. So, it is an industry that really shapes the economy of the island, especially Mallorca. Obviously, most of it is based here. And that it has managed to become part of, a, of a, it had managed to become known to the general public before. Unfortunately, the yachting industry was living to the back of, of, the, of the rest of the society. Yeah. And now slowly with some of the um, new marinas, with, with, the, with the yacht show, etc., yeah. it has opened up to the rest of the society. Um, even in places like the university, they are taking it into account for some of their courses. And the refit uh, part of it is, is, a, is, a, is a very important pillar of it all. Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of education going mm -hmm. on. There's a lot of like, and it's great to see that old like, well, I, I call them the local kids, makes me old. I, I know the local kids getting into, into yachting mm -hmm. in, in some way or position. But also again, for all you specialists out there, this is such a brilliant place to live. So there's no, there's, I mean, if you want to live in the lifestyle, if you want to do the lifestyle of yachting and we live in a great spot, we're here. Yeah, I think this, these were great words that you just mentioned. Let's go over to the last topic of today, right? Before, I, I think they're gonna give me the five minute time <laughs> shortly. It's going to my favorite time of year, winter. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we all love summer, and I know everybody wants to call me for summer, but winter is a blessing. It's so fantastic. And um, just for you, I didn't introduce myself because I'm just moderating, but I, I am the owner of, uh, of A-Crew and Evans & McGrath Superyard Consultancy, so we work a lot with the Superyard crew. So I can say something on this topic later. How great is winter in Mallorca? Well, nobody can tell you. Or in the Balearics in general. Eh? Yeah. yeah, obviously spending the winter here is the first choice, I think, for a big percentage of the industry. I'm talking about crew. Uh, Palma is a super international city. It's yeah. really well connected by uh, the airport and also by ferries. We have ferries every day to the mainland, to the south of France. And I think most especially the jutting uh, environment that you have here, the, uh, all the bars and the activities that the crew do, it's, well, from the places that I've been, I haven't seen it like this in the winter. So I think crew that they're always moving from one place to the other, here they can pretty much feel at home. And, and I think that's really positive. Apart from, sorry, all the, all the things that the island can bring to you, all the sports, the weather, the beach, and all this that probably is the thing that the people better know. And yeah, I think it's difficult not to enjoy your winter living here. Exactly. But also winter destination, right? To f go for it. Yes, I mean, it's obviously difficult to think of this as a winter yachting destination, but it is not impossible. We all have clients, maybe not so much charters, but owners who keep their boat here over the winter. And if their boat is not being worked on and they live in Europe, they come and spend weekends here over the winter yeah. because they have beautiful clear water. Um, swimmable temperature and they have a city which has life all year round unlike other islands in the Mediterranean where in the winter they're pretty much shut down so it is definitely a fantastic place to come whether it's ashore or whether it's on a, on a yacht that is already here. Because I know like even if, whether you fly commercial or private you're here within two hours That's basically. Correct. Yeah? Correct. It's like From we're like two hours and you're here. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so. And do you get do you get a lot of bookings for winter? Is that like charter? Not so much because, as I say, the charter clients they are normally um, their holidays are determined by school holidays. Yeah. And when it comes to school holidays, then they really want a destination where they're going to be guaranteed uh, good weather of if course. they're going to bring the whole family. But as I say, if they own a boat and the boat is here, they do come definitely. Yeah. Winter destination, Balearics. Winter destination. Well, to be honest. Uh, we don't have winter, we have a spring. <laughs> <laughs> That's, true. That's, true. That's, true. That's true. That's true. But uh, from an agent during the winter, for the amount of yachts that we have here and for the amount of crews that we have here, we have a permanent, constant request from our clients that are the crew that are living here. Because uh, in the islands, if you check the number of yachts that we have during the summer and you check the number of yachts that we have during the spring, yeah. It's quite similar. In other places, you can see that, okay, this place is more in a refit area, and yeah. you can see the amount of yachts that are going, for example, to Barcelona, that yeah. in the winter they have more yachts than in summer. There are other places that they have more yachts in summer, and winter is empty. Mm. But in the Balearics, we have the same number of yachts during summer and during winter. And this is great, because at the end, it's like when you have your car and you have your workshop, <laughs> and then you have your parking, <laughs> and then you, have, you want to do the, the refit works, maintenance work during the... the the, win the spring, sorry, yeah. <laughs> here in, in Mallorca is great, and at the same time, you can be in the most beautiful marinas, as Port Adriano, that we have here today, uh, but also here in, in Palma, uh, during the, the spring season, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that uh, it's, like, it's like the summer in other places in the world, our spring season. <laughs> I'm Dutch. <laughs> yeah, what I have. Yeah. Winter here is like a hot summer day in the <laughs> Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's true. Isabel, like, how is like... Uh, Winter destination Valley Arix. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, as my colleagues were saying, we don't really have a winter. Um, uh, we 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 we're not used to the cold, so when it's a little bit cold, we're all complaining. But uh, when you see tourists out there, they're not wearing coats or, or boots <laughs> or anything that we that we wear, right? But um, I think things have changed a lot uh, concerning the winter. Um, I work in in Portaviano since 1996. Obviously, it wasn't the port it is, but I've noticed the difference that before there was more of a summer and winter. Uh, then suddenly it changed like to people coming for uh, eight months. And now our clients, uh, uh, they come even for 10 months a year. So like perhaps just December and January, uh, they don't come as much. 
Uh, but the rest of the year, there's there's uh, clients in the port all the time. And then the boats, as, as you were all saying, the boats stay here. They leave their boats here. And as soon as they, because it's very easy nowadays, you just look at the internet and you say, oh, there's going to be a really good couple of days. So they just catch a, a plane and uh, they're here in a couple of hours and they're out on their boats. And uh, and it's even better, really, in in the in those in those nice uh, days that you have during the winter. The sea's calm. There's nobody there. And uh, our sea is uh, probably, I'm sure, warmer in the in the winter than than in their countries in the summer. So. Um, <laughs> So, so it's ideal for, for them to, to be out here and every time more we, we've seen they're coming out. So that's very good for the islands too. Great. So because I now going with back to like super yacht crew, they love it here, right? I mean, if, if crew have to have like a say in where to stay over winter, I think this is amongst the favorite places. I mean, I'm not taking away anything from the south of France or Italy or mainland Spain, but like there's so many great things to do. And, and I think we're going to round this session up with another little round asking you of your favorite winter spot. We did favorite summer spots. Let's do your favorite thing to do in winter on the Balearics, either as a tourist or as a crew member. Now you can pick. And then uh, we'll do a little, last little round, round it up. Anything that you still want to say, that's the moment. Let's start with Isabel. Favorite thing to do in winter. Well, I, I love, in the winter, I love those uh, warm days to go out on my bicycle or to go for a walk when I, with my dogs. And there's so many nice and spoiled places to go and very near. I mean, like, uh, I live in El Toro next to Porta Adriano and, uh, and you can just walk along the countryside there and, um, and it's really unspoiled. So, and that's the same all over the island. You've got very spoiled places, but just a couple of minutes away, you've, you've got places which are unspoiled and uh, where you can, you can, uh, you can be in, in, in the nature without anybody else. And that, that's my favorite, yeah. Fantastic. Miguel? Oof. Oof. A lot, because a lot. winter is even better than summer, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, there are other things because really I told you, we don't have winter, we have a spring. Yes. So, uh, bicycle, uh, running. I love running, so it's, it's great because you can go from here to Palma to Cablanc yeah. <laughs> running with no, no the stops. Uh, but also talking about the center of the islands, uh, yeah. I recommend just to, uh, to go to, to eat one of the best sobrasada in the, in the, in the center of Mallorca during uh, November and, and, and December. You have to explain what a sobrasada is. What? You have to explain what a sobrasada is. It's a sauce that is done uh, from the pork. Yeah. Uh, is, is red <laughs> <laughs> and with pan moreno that is the typical bread that we have yeah. here in Mallorca is uh, a delicatessen that we have here. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that every uh, people that is coming to the island they think more about Ensaimada that perhaps is one of our uh, most uh, um, well, it's a desert that we have here that is great but uh, with the sobrasada is, is a delicatessen and talking about Ensaimada, another good thing to do during our spring season is to go to Can Juan de Saigo, that is a beautiful bar that we have here in the center of, of Palma and uh, with a short chocolate with Ensaimada in Can Juan de Saigo. Try to do it. I'm going to do that one. <laughs> How, this is for a good one, right? We have to beat that. Mata, go for it. <laughs> um, I would have to say a walks in nature, like Isabel was saying, I would have to say hikes. And something that a lot of people do not know, in some very popular areas in the summer, like the beach of Streng, yeah. next to it there's a, a, like a, a very a big salt area. We, we have that here, and you have that in Ibiza too, a very similar salt area. And at the end of the, or just when the winter is finishing, um, there's a lot of flamingos there, ah, yes. both in, the, in Mallorca and in Ibiza, yes. and, and these areas. And this is an amazing site that people do not think, for example. Um, so all these things that, are, that happen on the islands when it's quieter are really worth seeing. Fantastic. That's a good one. It's not the flamingos. Victor. Yeah, I think the, the best proof of our winter is that the, what we do in winter is pretty much the same than in, in summer. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I was thinking I, 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 yeah. what I'm going to say. I would say the same. It's all about outdoor activities, yeah. uh, even going to the beach, especially after the summer. Yeah. The temperature of the water, yeah. it's, it's still warm. I yeah. think it's more than 20 degrees till November. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it's a sunny day, you can still swim and the water is not cold. Cycling, yeah, going sailing, we sail the whole year. So, yeah, th I was thinking now, like, probably the best proof is that we, we do the same, all about outdoor. And yeah, if it gets uh, 
a rainy day, that obviously there are some rainy day, few, but there are some. You have all the restaurants and places in the interior of the island that are fantastic food and very good scenes. So you have the overall between the good weather and outdoor and the restaurants and social life. Yeah. I have to say something about the rainy days because I'm Northern European. Rainy days here in the Balearic are not the same. They're not cold and you dry up within five. They call a rainy day when they got four drops, right? Yeah. And then they put on their gloves and their jackets and, and they... I even see people walking around with winter boots while the tourists are still wearing shorts and flip-flops. Yeah, that's, that's true, it's right? Because I used to live in Holland and I remember there when we had a barbecue or something yeah. the weekend and the forecast was rainy. They were still for it, like, no, maybe there's a window of no rain. And at the end, it was raining and yeah. you couldn't do it. And here's the other way around. If there is any opportunity on the forecast that it rains, everything gets cancelled. And then the day <laughs> after, it's like, but the weather is perfect. We could have done it. Yeah, exactly. So that's pretty much the difference, yeah. yeah. Good. And, and I'll end with my favorite, which are the golf courses in all three of the <laughs> islands. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> It's all year round, right? Or I, I, I take the rip out, go out. That's nice. I like to take the boat out in the winter because it's so quiet and it's peaceful in the bays and just like take the boat out, go around the islands. I mean, it's, that's fantastic. I mean, and my kids love to jet ski. That's the only moment they can really go for it because in summer I tell them that they have to Make behave. Eh? <laughs> eh? Port side, port side. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's basically it. Guys, I think this was a great session. I think uh, we're talk top destination Balearics. I think your knowledge is amazing. So anybody needs any information, just reach out to them, ask them anything, because they know so much. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Isabel, final, uh, final yeah. words? From you, anything you would like well, to add? Well, thank, thank you very much. Um, it's been, are you sure it's 45 minutes? Because it's seemed a lot less. Um, I'm sure we've got much more to say, but um, I really, I really like to give it out a, posi a positive message for this summer, and uh, I really recommend people to to come out to the Balearic Islands, summer and winter and spring, and uh, just hope everybody a, a very good season. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you to the Balearic Yacht Show for this opportunity and I'm very proud to be here uh, representing my company and, and representing uh, my island and my islands, Balearic Islands as a Mallorquin. Uh, a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Marta? Yes, yeah, same thing. Thank you everybody for organizing this. Um, it's been a great opportunity. We're very, very happy. I'm always very proud to promote the islands, to enhance everything that the island has. And on the other side, sometimes I feel maybe I'm talking too much. Maybe, you know, maybe we're, we're fine the way we are. So, you know? <laughs> Don't no, but, more people. <laughs> no, but, but, yeah, but, uh, but honestly, uh, thank you. It's, it's good. And uh, just come to the Balearics. That's, that's all we can say. Just come here. Just come. You know? Thank you, Marta. Victor? Yeah, thank you. And I would like also to recommend to the people watching to follow the virtual Balearic show. There are going to be many interesting sessions. There are going to be more specific sessions. I know about Refit, we're going to have another one where we will go more in detail, I, I guess, on, yeah. on every field. And yeah, I think we have something different to offer. Many people in the industry obviously know that's why we are so popular. But I think there's still a gap of people from the industry that they don't know what we can offer. So yeah, I would recommend to follow the Balearic Virtual Show as it's a good opportunity to get to know more about that. Fantastic. That brings us to an end. I would like to uh, thank my guests for joining us. I would like to thank also for the opportunity of this great show to promote our beautiful destination. And I would like to end with the words, we are open for business. See you this summer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.